What's up my stat stars, Michael Princhak here, ready to talk to you about residual plots and exactly why residual plots need to show no pattern in terms of meaning that a linear model is appropriate for the data. A lot of teachers say it, a lot of students hear it, but not everybody understands exactly why residual plots need to be, well, scattered, no pattern. Now, before we dive too far into that topic, I want to remind you guys of the Ultimate Review Packet that you can get a free trial of right now at ultimatereviewpacket.com for AP Statistics. Now, in the Ultimate Review Packet, you get study guides, practice sheets, multiple choice, exclusive videos explaining topics, and so much more. And you get answer keys to everything. It's exactly what you need to practice, get ready for the AP exam in May, and also prepare for your unit tests in class. But let's start with residual plots. Before we dive too far into what residual plots are all about and why they need to be scattered, we first got to take a look at scatter plots. So here's a scatter plot showing the IQs of several students and how long it took them to solve a puzzle. And the first thing we notice is that negative trend. We see that smarter kids, or when your IQ is higher, you tend to need less time to solve a puzzle, which I guess makes sense. We also see that it's somewhat linear. You're never going to see a perfect line in real data, but I don't see a giant curve. That's important. And it also looks somewhat strong, probably has a correlation maybe around 0.8 or something like that. It's not perfect, but it's good. Okay, now here's the deal. If we want to find a line that goes through our data, and not just a curved line or any other line, a line, a linear equation, right? A least squares regression equation, we need to make sure that it's appropriate to do so. And there are two really important things that you have to check to confirm that a linear regression line is appropriate for your data. First, your data has to look like well, somewhat linear, which we've already confirmed, looks somewhat linear. Again, no giant curve. The second thing that you should have been taught is that you need to have a residual plot that shows no pattern. Well, why is that? Well, first you have to remember that residuals are the vertical distances between the actual points on the scatter plot and the predictions that come from the least squares regression line. So again, you think about all the vertical distances that we see. And first off, some of the residuals are going to be positive. Those are for the points that are above the line. Some residuals are going to be negative. Those are for the points below the line. Some residuals are going to be kind of larger. Those are the ones that are further from the line. And some residuals are going to be kind of smaller. Those are the ones that are closer to the line. And we see these types of points, positive and large, negative and small, positive and small, whatever, all the different combinations. We see them throughout the entire scatter plot. That actually means that our least squares regression line is going through our data, which is, well, what it's supposed to be doing. Now, when we turn around and make a plot of those residuals, we should see exactly that. Some positive, some negative, some larger residuals, some smaller residuals. So again, every point in the residual plot is corresponding to a point in the scatter plot, but instead of looking at the X and the Y, we're looking at the X and the residual. So again, we should see zero going through the middle, and that actually represents the linear regression line itself because any value that is identical to what it's predicted would create a zero. And then again, we see lots of positives corresponding to the positive residuals, and we see lots of negatives, but the most important the important thing is that we see positive and negative residuals throughout, not just in one specific spot, but throughout the graph. And again, remember, if your line is really going through the data, you're going to see some residuals that just end up being bigger because they're just the ones that are further and lots of residuals that are smaller because they're ones that are just close to the line. Again, this is all a good thing and exactly why we want a residual plot to be scattered positive residuals, negative residuals, big residuals, small residuals, medium residuals throughout, that's a good thing. That means that your line went through the data and a good line is gonna do exactly that. But perhaps the best way that we can understand why we want to have scatter in a residual plot is to actually look at a graph that has a giant curve in it. So here is a scatter plot, which I hope you clearly see that there is a curve in. Now, if we try to put a least squares regression line through the data, which computer software would actually create, we would get a line that looks like this. And obviously, it doesn't fit the data well. It's a straight linear line trying to go through a curved line. doesn't make sense. But here's what the residual plot would look like. If we notice early on, we have positive residuals. In the middle, we have all negative residuals. Small in the beginning, then they get bigger, and then they get small again because, again, they're curving around the line. And then at the end, we see negative residuals. So when we take a look at that residual plot, we're going to actually see that pattern. 
We're going to see the positive residuals in the beginning, starting out kind of bigger, then getting a little bit smaller. Then we're going to see negative residuals forming, starting off small, then getting a little bit bigger, a little bit more negative, then getting less negative, getting closer to that line again, and then we're going to see the residuals switch to being positive. That's what's actually creating a pattern in our residual plot, which is what we don't want. Because when you have a giant curve in your data and you try to put a line through it, your residuals are going to end up having a pattern to them. And that's bad because you don't want to put a line through a curve. So again, that is exactly why we want to see a residual plot that shows scatter. That means that a linear regression line is appropriate for your data. When you look at a residual plot and you see a giant curve in it, it's a sign that the original scatter plot had a, well, had a curve in it as well, and that's of course bad. That means it's curved and we don't want to ever use correlation with curved data, nor do we want to try to put a linear straight line through curved data. So that is exactly why we want to have a residual plot that shows, well, no pattern, scatter in it. That actually means that the least squares regression line was appropriate for your data. Not too bad, fairly easy to understand, but a concept that a lot of kids don't understand because it's not really explained to them very well. So hopefully you understand it now, and we'll see you in the next video.